Do you want to get the most out of your Vampire Survivors runs? Do you want to do 30 minute clears where you're hitting level 130, 140, maybe even 150? Well, if so, then this is the video for you. My name is Leroy, this is Leroy Gaming, and welcome to my advanced tips for Vampire Survivors videos. Now, if you're watching this video, make sure you stay around to the very end. The final tip is a doozy and it's gonna help you supercharge your results. Now, with that being said, if you end up liking this video, make sure to like and subscribe, drop those comments, let me know what you think about the video and share your tips for others as well. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump right in and check out my advanced tips for vampire survivors. Okay, my first tip has to do with identifying advanced play essentials. And these are basically key power-ups you're gonna wanna get right off the bat. They're gonna make a huge impact in the play style they're gonna have in order to be advanced player. We're gonna start with luck. You're gonna wanna get luck up to 30%. This is gonna be three upgrades here. And it's gonna make it so that we can get decent luck on our runs without having to actually pick up the luck passive, which is gonna be a waste on our runs. The second thing we're gonna to wanna to pick up is going to be the move speed. This is gonna give us 10% extra move speed and it's gonna help us maneuver the monsters on the hyper speed very, very effectively. And then the other essential just to get started for advanced play is I recommend getting the amount power up as soon as possible. Now, as of 0.2.9, I believe it's about 9,000 gold, so it's not the cheapest, but it is very powerful as all the most powerful weapons are in fact projectile based. This giving you plus one projectile to all of them, potentially five or six of your abilities. This is gonna give you a really, really good return on your investment. Now, eventually you're gonna wanna fill them all out, but early on, those are the ones I would start with to get you ramping up and going up. Now, tip number two is that you need to get used to a glass cannon playstyle. This game is definitely glass cannon for the win. Picking up any of the passives that are defensive, for example, like Armor, Hollow Heart, uh, Puma Rola, for the most part is very, very inefficient. The only time you would pick up any of these, if, for example, you were dead set on using a specific weapon that required it for the evolution. Perfect example is if you are using the whip, you are going to need the hollow heart to upgrade it to the bloody tear. Now the bloody tear is an amazing upgrade. The downside for it, why it's not one of my best and uh, recommended weapons high end is that you have to pick up hollow heart, which is an absolutely useless passive as you'll never need that extra health during your runs. Other than that, you're gonna to wanna to make sure all of your actives and passives increase your kill speed and DPS in one way or another. This does mean that unlike my beginner tip, where I loved Laurel for beginners, once you're advanced, you gotta throw off the training wheels. That means you gotta get rid of this. No more Laurel for you as an advanced player. You're gonna be doing nothing but active DPS abilities on your builds. Okay, tip number three is that you need to learn and know your weapon combinations. There, as of patch 0.2.9, are nine different weapons where there are specific evolutions. These are going to be the bread and butter of your builds. Evolved weapons do dramatically more damage and are perform way better than non-upgraded counterparts, and for the most part, are in many cases superior to the offensive abilities that cannot currently be evolved. Now, with the exception of Vandalier that I'll explain in a second, all of these you're gonna be required to get your primary weapon, so whip, axe, cross, etc., and get it to level eight. You will also need to get a minimum of level one 
of the passive that's associated with them that you see on this list here. Once you have those pre requirements, you need to pick up a chest and then you have a rather high chance of getting an upgrade and an evolution from the chest. Now, the one exception here is the Vandalier. With the Vandalier, you get a start with the Pichon, which is basically the White Dove. You need to have that, max it out on a run. Maxing it out will unlock the Ebony Wing, which is basically the Black Dove. And then in order to get Vandalier on a subsequent run, you basically need to pick up both Pichon and Ebony, get them both to level 8, and when they're both at level 8 and pick out, you pick up a chest, you're going to be able to get Vandalier. Now, what's important about this is initially it's going to take up two slots on your active ability. But when you do the evolution, they're going to merge into one bird, the Vandalier. And that's going to reopen up one of your active slots. So you're going to go, be able to get another active ability. So that's a nice bonus there. But... Make sure that as an advanced player, you're going to be using your builds around these various active abilities. And you want to make sure that most are going to be ones that you can evolve. Okay, my next tip is that you want to pick build abilities over upgrades when you're leveling up. Now, every single time you level up, you're going to have an option of three or four active or passive options. Now... In this case, as you can see, we have the option of either upgrading the Magic Wand, which is one of our current abilities for our builds, or picking one of two new options. Now, in a case like this, you want to look at your options, and if at least one of the two, uh, one of the options is part of your build, so in this case, I know that I want to make sure I pick up Spellbinder, then you want to make sure you pick it up. Because there is no guarantee that the next time you level up that that's going to pop up as an option now there's a higher chance you're going to get magic wand again because it's already one of your active options if you do not pick up options that are part of your build when they pop up you have an increased chance that when you level up all three or four options will be ones that are not good for you and that would force you to pick an ability like Stone Mask here well, that you do not want to pick up. And for advanced play, this would kill your run. So make sure that you pick up your new abilities first and then and only then pick up the upgrade. So if all the options are either bad outside of an upgrade that you don't want or all of them are upgrades, that's the only times you're going to want to pick an upgrade over an active or passive ability that you want for your build. Now, my next tip is to not be afraid to reset when you get a bad draw. So here's a perfect example. This is actually my very first level up, and I got these four abilities. And for my build that I'm going for, none of these are good. Now, as a beginner, you may just pick one of these up and be like, oh, not a big deal, and move on. But the reality is if you're picking up either actives or passives that are not synergizing with your build, then it's going to have a huge impact on your overall performance. This is mainly a problem within the first five to seven minutes when you haven't picked up a lot of abilities. As you pick up more and more active and passives, there's a higher likelihood that at the very least you're going to have one upgrade that is viable even if everything else is junk. But early on, when you have zero, one, two, or maybe three options, there's a higher probability that all three or four options are going to be poor. And in those cases, just go ahead and reset and restart. Remember, most of the gold you're going to be getting in progress is going to be at the very, very end of the runs. So starting over at the beginning shouldn't be a big deal. You should get used to resetting. Okay, my next step for you is to max out your primary attacks as soon as possible. Now. What I identify a primary attack as is going to be one of your active abilities that can evolve. So in this example here, you're going to see my Fire Wand. And you'll notice it's level 6, while Spellbinder, one of the actives, is currently level 3. And in a scenario like this, I will 100% of the time want to pick up and work towards maxing out Fire Wand to level 8. Because upgrading it 
and evolving it is going to have a dramatic impact on how much damage it does. The earlier you get these active abilities maxed out, the greater impact you're going to have on the damage, how much you kill, how much EXP you get, and how high your levels will be at the end of the game. Leveling up your Spellbinder, an extra 10%, for example, isn't going to have nearly as much of an impact. Now, the only time you wouldn't pick up Fire Wand in this case is if, for example, Cross or Clover were part of your build. Because we're going based off the previous tips, you always want to make sure that if an ability, either active or passive, pops up that is part of your build, at the very least pick up that level 1 of it before upgrading your primaries or your passives that you have already selected. All right, my next tip for you is to time your weapon evolutions. So what you're seeing footage of here is I am getting close to leveling and I just killed an elite. And so you saw it drop a chest. Now there's two things that you could do at this point. You could just go straight for that chest and pick it up and get some sort of upgrades. But if, for example, you know that you are really close to hitting level eight on one or more of your weapons, so they're like level seven, what you're going to want to do is make sure that you time those chest pickups. Because remember, the chest pickups are still relatively rare. They're not all over the place. So in a case like this, what you 100% want to do is make sure that you level up first and see if you have a chance of upgrading one of your abilities to level 8. Now what you also see here on the right side of the screen is that Half of it is filled up with these EXP gems. So technically, I could probably level up here and almost level up again because I'm at a low level. Here I'm level 16. So in a situation like this, you could even potentially push it and see if you get a level up to level 8 at this level up or potentially the second one. Now, if you've been kind of spread out and you know nothing is close to 8, then of course, take the chest as soon as you can. But if you get to a point where you're close to it, go ahead, give it one or two chances and then pick up the chest because then you have a chance of rolling that epic upgrade, the evolution upgrade. And having those a couple minutes earlier can make all the difference. The DPS you will get, increase, that you will get from evolved weapons rather than the standard ones is dramatic over a couple of minutes. So you want to make sure you prioritize that. Now, that doesn't mean you let a chest sit for two or three minutes. At that point, you're losing too much from the other potential upgrades. But if you know you're close, wait on it, get the level up, get the timing correct. Now, the next tip I have for advanced play and optimal farming is picking the correct stage. And so, by and far, I highly recommend inlaid library for your stage. Now, also, you want to get used to hyper mode as soon as possible, because as you can see here, when you run it, it's going to give you 50% extra gold, 10% extra luck. And this may not sound like a boon, but having enemies move faster is actually a boon. It is a benefit because they're going to basically get to you quicker, clump towards you quicker, and as your DPS increases, they're just leading the lambs to the slaughter, basically. Additionally, there are two additional benefits that I wanna share with you. So when you enter the level, first big step is that you can go right up here in the upper left-hand corner, pick this up, that is always spawns there, it's an instant level up. So you know right away if you got a good spawn or not, because sometimes you'll get your first level up, and this is all junk. Now in this case, I don't like King Bible anymore. I don't like garlic for my power advanced build. So Rune Tracer, I do like. So there you go, and I'm off to the races. That's the first benefit. The second benefit is the fact, especially of the Rune Tracer, the fact that enemies can only go left to right, and there's actually things to bounce things off of. So as you notice, this bounces off the walls. This helps you kill more enemies, as opposed to the first map that goes up, down, left, and right. Enemies tend to scatter more. It's harder to clump them together, especially once you get your crazy AOL kill elements. And the final element that you want to keep in mind is that unlike the other map, this has an easily predictable, easily fi findable stone mask that I'm going to talk about here in a second. So do keep that in mind. All those elements combine for making this the optimal level 
for advanced gameplay, kind of power leveling, power grinding. All right, my next step has to do with the stone mask that you see right here that I'm clicking on. So this is a critical item. And if you take a look at it, you can go over it. It's a weapon you can find and you can either, you can choose to pick it up or discard it. Now do note, if you discard it as I just did, it is gone for good. And I don't know if it can spawn again, but the key to this item, which is a passive effect is timing. So what you really need to do is make sure that you wait until you have all six of your passives in the upper left hand corner filled up. Because if you pick it up at that point, it is going to actually give you a seventh passive. Now, if I were to pick it up right now, it would have taken up my second spot and I would still be capped at six. So that is a very, very important note. Now, the nice thing is it is predictable. Whenever you start the level, if you go to the right, maybe the equivalent of anywhere between six and eight or nine screens, you're going to run into that every single time. So just when you're starting your leveling up process, go to the right until you find it. And then you can just keep in the back of your mind how far away you go from that. So you can start clearing to the right a couple screens over, and then you can make your way back over to the left. And as you get close to getting your sixth upgrade, just be ready to run over here. As soon as you get your sixth buff, you wanna go ahead and get this because it's gonna give you that boost to gold drops. This is gonna dramatically increase how much gold you're going to get over your run and you want to basically just time it to get that as closely to you getting your sixth passive okay tip number 10 is that exp is king now there are three different areas where you can increase your exp multiplier the first one is actually a passive effect so the crown increases your character exp gain by seven percent per tier so even though some people see this as a non-offensive passive it is the one passive that is quote unquote that doesn't increase your dps that i do recommend picking up in most builds because it's just going to help you get more out of your dps so if you're pushing and trying to get as high of a level as you can this is actually going to be an excellent passive I don't max it out right away because you still need to make sure you're increasing your DPS, but I like to pick it up when it comes up. And then whenever the timing is right, I like to pick that up. So that is your first area of where you can get passives. The second one is gonna take you a while to build up. And that's this growth element under your power up selection. There are five tiers of them. At max tier, you get 15% passive, more EXP gain, which is great, but this is extremely expensive. It starts costing a couple thousand by the end. The last one is over 20,000 gold. So this is a huge investment. You won't be able to reach your max potential for basically levels until you max this out, but you can kind of work on this over time. So that is your second form. And then your third form is actually in characters. And, and Imelda, which is basically the first hero that you can unlock, I believe it only costs about 10 gold to unlock, she has an amazing passive the downside is she's got a weapon that i'm not a huge fan of but do not underestimate this buff it maxes out at 30 percent but the key here is it maxes out at level 15 which is just a couple minutes into your run compare that to like mordecasio who, who is also excellent he has a amazing buff also but you don't max that out to level 60 which is almost halfway through your run or it could be a little bit over your run half your run so those are your three methods of increasing your exp it is the key so you're going to want to co combine two or three of those elements to maximize your leveling and power gaming potential all right tip 11 is picking the correct characters for advanced play now these are the nine characters that i've unlocked but there are four characters that I have found to be kind of viable. And they go in the reverse orders I'm going to cover right now. So in fourth place is Arca. Now the reason I like Arca is first of all, Arca starts with the Fire Wand, which is an amazing weapon. In my experience, this tends to top my DPS charts when I evolve it more than any other ability. Additionally, the passive he gets, weapon cooldown is reduced by 5% every 10 levels. 
maxing at 15% at level 30 is pretty decent. So this combination makes it so that his DPS level scales really well. He's good at killing stuff early on to get his leveling up kind of scaled up rather quickly. So solid overall. Now in third place is Antonio. What's nice about Antonio is you get him at the very beginning. Outside of beginners sometimes struggling to get a hang of the whip mechanic. Outside of that, he is solid. The whip does have a weakness. You do have to basically get the hollow heart passive. That's the one that increases your max health. And that is basically dead in the water. It's a horrible passive because you don't need health. That doesn't up your DPS at all. So that's the unfortunate side. It, it's actual kill power is decent. It gives you health back, which is nice. A little bit of an oh shit button, but not necessary. But what's amazing for him is this innate passive. You get an extra 10% damage every 10 levels maxing at 50%. So level 50. You will get level 50 around halfway through the run or so. Maybe a little later, depending if you're a little slow. But 50% damage impacts all your damage. That is significant. That is a lot better than most of these buffs. Now, in second place, we have Mordecasio. Now, Mordecasio, I abhor his little bone attack. It kind of ricochets. It's slow at low levels. It only, you know, hits one target. It just it gives him a slow start. It's a handicap. It does get decent once you get some projectiles, but it's never going to be a world breaker. What is amazing for him, especially for a power gamer, is this passive. You basically get every 20 levels an extra projectile. This impacts all your projectile weapons. And spoiler alert, all the best weapons in this game are projectile based. So this is going to give you up to three extra projectiles of every single weapon. And if you're going glass cannon, having six attacks, that's basically up to 18 extra projectiles from this passive at level 60, which again, you'll probably get a little bit past halfway through your run. Somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes into your run is my estimate. So very, very powerful. You can get higher DPS on this character than just about anybody else. In fact, higher DPS than anybody else from my testing. But he is not the king. He is the queen here because the queen is the king, if that makes sense. So the king of all characters, the numero uno, is Imelda. Now, she has a downside. Her wand is horrible. It's not horrible early on because you can kind of auto-target it. So you can get your early level or two very quickly. But why you're getting her is her passive. If you listen to the previous tip where I said EXP is king, this should have already hinted at this. Getting 30% max EXP bonus at level 15 is insane. You're going to get level 15 if you're playing this right within the, next, the first two to five minutes, depending how good you are and how quick you are. And then for the rest of the run, so between 25 and 27 minutes, you're going to get 30% more EXP than anybody else. That is going to scale insanely, especially because of the fact that in the last minute, you may get a massive amount of levels because of all the red drops that you're gonna get, all the red gems. So this is insanely powerful, currently the best character, and the best news is, again, you need 10 gold to unlock her once you start the game. So you get access to the best character right away. Now, if you've waited all the way to the end, great for you, thank you for watching. This final tip is going to be the difference maker between getting your runs to be in the 120s and 130s and then potentially pushing 140s or higher. And the secret to this is the vacuum upgrade or rather drop. And this is going to drop from the little candlesticks throughout the level in the library. And notice it says, gather all experience gems left on the ground. Now this is not in your immediate area. This will take it from the entire map. So the secret is as follows. Because these are relatively rare, what you're going to want to do is as soon as one drops, ignore it. But take note where it is. If you are playing on Hyper and you've unlocked 30% from your power-ups for luck, you have an innate 40% luck boost, that should make it that you should confidently 
get at least one of these in a run. Now, I have had runs where only one drops. So it's not necessarily safe to use it if you get it early. What you want to do is hold on to it unless the second one drops. If a second one drops, go ahead and loot one of them. But always have one in the back pocket. At that point, wait until the last 10 seconds of your run. Make sure you're hovering around that area and around 10 seconds, pop this. You are going to have a massive amount of red gems around you. This will make sure that the vast majority of red gems get picked up before the Reaper spawns and basically insta-kills you. So this is very, very critical. You could push it closer, maybe five, six seconds. But remember, depending on how far away some of those gems are, there is a travel time. So if you wait too long, you risk basically getting killed before you pick up all the gems. And this will add, give you an extra two, three, four, five, maybe six levels, depending on how much stuff you've left out on the floor. It can be significant. All right, guys, so those are my advanced tips for vampire survivors. Do you agree with them? Do you have other tips you want to share with other players? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, drop a like. Subscribe to the channel if you like the kind of content I create. I do cover indie games like this from time to time. My major focus is on RPGs and looter shooters. So especially if you like those genres, make sure to subscribe. But at the very least, drop me a like if you do enjoy the content. All right, guys, with that being said, thank you so much for the support. Make sure to check out our Discord. If you have any questions, we discuss Vampire Survivors and other games as well. You can find links to all of that in the description. With that being said, guys, you guys have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys in the next video.